Hello and welcome to this month's Process of the Month with me, Rory Canavan. Today we're going to be going through the asset use verification process. Uh, before we do that though, uh, let me just quickly run through the agenda. First off, we're going to start us off with the primary and secondary objectives of the process itself. Then we will offer a process run through using the uh, tried and trusted um, ARIS diagrams that we like to use at SAM Charter. Then we will look at potential banana skins associated with this process. We will again, once more, as always, offer much love to our sponsors. These are the people who've taken the time to um, place an advert in our uh, process kit. And then we will see uh, what's coming up next month. So to get us on our way, the asset use verification process has a primary objective of to uh, classify server devices appropriate to their role in the company, aiding the definition of software classification wherever possible. So if we have a server that is uh, earmarked as test or dev, as an example, then any activities that take place on that server should in theory be test related or development related. Our secondary objective then is to review the worth of the server roles to the business and then make an informed decision as to what we do about that server, whether we retain it, uh, whether we relabel it, or indeed whether we dispose of it then at that point or whether we think about actually removing some of the software off there. So this uh, seems like a very simple process from the outset. Um, we start off at 1.10 and we look to gather uh, our hardware inventory estate uh, report. Um, from there, of course, um, we, we have to do some filtering So because we, we don't want to be doing this exercise for every uh, desktop and laptop that we might find or even mobile device. So we then look to isolate our server devices. Um, now again, depending on the level of oversight you apply to your inventory data, um, it could be that if you're doing this for the first time, there's going to be a lot of uh, grief and angst because you're going to have to identify these devices as servers. Um, thankfully though, a lot of the, um, uh, the, the better SAM tools out there in this day and age, they'll, they'll be able to recognize the hardware profile and um, confirm that it is um, a server, at least in the eyes of the manufacturer. Uh, one thing to watch out for, of course, is that you could be designating a server role to a very meaty uh, PC device that sits in the office somewhere and does nothing other than um, perform so server activity. So don't, uh, don't just rest on your laurels and assume that uh, your SAM suite is instantly going to in identify every server there. But once you have your, uh, your server devices, we can move on from 1.20. And then we go to 1.30, and that's analyze the, the activity of actually analyzing our server devices then. So which roles are they playing? And again, the first time you do this activity, um, it, it could, be, could be quite painful, um, depending if you do have a lot of servers. So whilst in the diagram here, we have that it's just the ham manager who is doing this activity, um, uh, perhaps the phrase divide and conquer might, uh, might be more appropriate if you've got thousands of these devices get a team in, get them to analyze what the server is doing and allocate uh, an appropriate heading over that, uh, that given device. Um, and again, this is where it plays to um, have an effective uh, device naming strategy. So if you can actually build in the role or activity of that server, be it dev, test, even academic, uh, potentially um, failover, high availability, all of, all of these kind of categories that we have in IT for these devices, if you can build that into your naming strategy and put it into the computer name, um, you've, you've got the potential there to, to filter very quickly um, activities that go on when your inventory state um, or your inventory gathering experience uh, ports data into the SAM suite and all of a sudden you see six new instances of a database. Uh, spring up, uh, but you realize actually it's on a dev platform. So, you know, well, maybe that's something that we look at again in 60 days time to see, do we really need those six instances rather than, um, you know, the, the alarm bells going off instantly saying what the hell is going on. 
So at one point four row, then after having gone through the uh, the analysis, there we we actually um, take the time to make a decision around: do we still need those servers? Um, it's particularly applicable, not least in the the um, virtualized environment, because the the speed and 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 um, uh, ability to generate a virtual device so quickly these days is um, is uh, mind numbing. Mind numbing in that. 20 minutes, bump, you've got a new server, uh, and it can be replicated. And before you know it, this virtual instance can be bouncing seven different ways around your data center. So to be able to actually put a pin in these and say, um, this is what the role of the server is, this is the value it offers to the company, um, that's, that's power, that's information, and that's something that should, um, you know, IT professionals really should be able to demonstrate uh, uh, on, on a fairly frequent basis. So as we've modeled it here, we've got two decisions to come out of such activities. Either we're going to retain that server because it offers value to the business, or we're actually going to get to get it deleted. It no longer serves its purpose. So let's, uh, let's not give ourselves uh, angst uh, around uh, any compliance reports or vendor audits in the future and actually dispose of it. So if we move on to the next page then, we can see at 1.50 we've got an ag activity to update the server details in our CMDB. Um, you may well actually want to do that within your SAM suite too if you've customized fields to actually um, retain that level of information there. Or if we've decided that actually we're going to uh, dispose of this, um, uh, this device, be it virtual, be it physical, uh, we've got an option, we've got a couple of options here. We can go to a hardware disposal process if it's a physical server we're actually disposing of. Um, if it's a virtual device and the, the associated software is, is installed on there too, then we could take care of that with our software removal process as well. The potential banana skins that we have out of uh, such a process are this. The process is never run. So when it comes to a software vendor audit um, and a, uh, the, the findings have been that you've got um, 2,000 instances installed of a, of a database around your IT estate, they will all be deemed as live. Um, but if you've got a, a naming convention or you've done work to demonstrate that actually 400 of those are dev or test or worthy of uh, a reduced cost in licensing, then uh, the more power to your elbow. Uh, another problem is that asset status is not periodically refreshed. So uh, devices can be reallocated, can be reappointed to, uh, to other roles. Um, something that could have been earmarked as dev in the past um, now is live, is now production, and therefore the licensing model changes or adapts to uh, a production scenario. Uh, a particular issue might be that servers might fulfill multiple roles. So if that is the case, it, it may be that in the discussion around the analysis, you have to rope in more people to uh, make a decision as to what takes place with this server. Is it retained? Um, do you move parts of the software to uh, another device? Um, or indeed, do you, do you leave it alone where it is? Uh, ultimately, of course, uh, that SAM does not talk to service management as well. So um, from a SAM perspective, we could have a very uh, clear idea, so we believe, of what role this server plays. Um, but service management might argue that actually we, we've we earmarked that for something in the future, so please don't go near it because um, it, it forms part of our, our major plans in the future. So um, don't be afraid to um, uh, go whole ship on this and actually talk with people purely beyond your SAM team and purely beyond the server owner as to uh, what takes place with those devices. As ever, we like to offer much love to our sponsors here at this point and thank them for their support through our, our process kit, uh, namely Aspera, Flexera and Snow, softwaremanagement.org, Kylie Fowler at ITAM Intelligence, and the good folks at Medora Consulting who are always um, there to help you with uh, guidance around Oracle. We also like to reach out and say thank you to John Grubb at Software Advocates, uh, Louise uh, Ulrich and Paul at Licensing School, and also to the good folks at Palisade Compliance. 
Last but by no means least, Chris Goff and his team at Derive Logic. Thank you, guys. If you like what you see with the process kit and the, the ARIS maps, there are 21 other processes that we've modeled here. Um, you can go to the SAM Charts website and there's a, a variety of options there to be able to purchase the uh, aforementioned processes. So coming up next month, we have the reporting process, which if memory serves is going to be delivered by David Foxen. Thank you, David. And as ever, my contact details. If you do wish to email me, please reach out at rory.canavan at samcharter.com. You can reach me on Twitter at storybyrory or even at DNA of ITAM now. And also on LinkedIn. I seem to live on there, so uh, please feel free to drop me a message there too. And at that point, I will say thank you very much. <laughs>